What's up y'all, it's Issa, welcome back. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Please, please, please to become a part of our forever family. We're almost at 100, so just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload. So today I'm going to be going over a couple of reasons why your curls might not be doing that good, okay? Why, why they might be a little bit thirsty, okay? So we're just gonna get in to a couple of points. I have some things written down so that I don't forget. So the first point that I have is trims. Make sure that you're trimming your hair every six to eight weeks. What happens is the dead hair that you have at the end will eventually eat up the shaft of your hair. That's what dead hair does, okay? It's bitter. All right, it's salty. It wants to consume the rest of your beautiful tresses because it doesn't want to see you prosper, okay? So just cut those ends off. You don't need them. They're dead weight. Make sure that you're getting it trimmed. I trim my hair like every two months just so that my hair can just look voluminous, okay? Even though this is first day hair, this is day one hair. Okay, so it's not that voluminous today, but tomorrow, catch me tomorrow, sis. Because we will have some volume then. Then I'll be popping out, okay? Don't wait four months to trim your hair. Not moisturizing your hair is just... If you have curls and you're not moisturizing them... Sis, what are you... Do you even have curly hair? I mean, I don't, I don't know what that means. If you don't moisturize your hair... Leave-in conditioner is really what I'm talking about. So just make sure that when you do your curly hair products that you mix in a curl cream or you mix in a leave-in. I personally like to mix in a leave-in. So I use the Aunt Jackie's um, Quench Deep Conditioner Leave-In. And I also will use my Aussie Moisture Leave-In. Or that's not really a leave-in, it's a deep conditioner. But I'll put it in as a leave-in. So I'm always hydrating my hair. Always. Even when I do wash days and I'm not going anywhere and I'm not putting anything in my hair, I'll put a castor oil leave-in or something of that nature in my hair. It is so important to keep your hair moisturized, especially curly hair needs moisture. Like our hair is so susceptible to being dry. We need all the moisture that we can get. So just try to invest in some good moisturizers, good deep conditioners. I can even, you know, give y'all a couple that I use if you want. So comment down in the comment section, you know, if you want to know what type of conditioners and stuff that I use. Another thing is too much gel. Now at first, I didn't know that this was a thing. I did not know that too much gel was a thing, but it definitely can be. It depends what gel you use and it has to be right for your hair. So for me, I always slick my hair down with Eco Style. Um, that gel is just perfect for me. It makes my hair hard, but it doesn't make it like disgusting and gooey like Girl is Not does. I don't like it. It's blue. It's this really weird blue color. It's really, really tacky. I don't care for it. If I were to have used it for a long period of time, it may have thinned out like the front portion of my hair, which I don't want that. So I stopped using it. So using too much gel, especially throughout your hair, like I see some girls will literally put like a whole bunch of girl snot in their hands and then break it through their hair. Your hair should not be that crunchy, first of all. And you shouldn't need to use something that strong, okay? Just get some eco, get something that is for putting throughout your entire head of hair. Deep conditioning. Now, as a curly girl, I know some of y'all can relate. I don't deep condition my hair enough at all. I probably deep condition my hair once a month, if that. Sometimes I will go a whole month without deep conditioning my hair, and that is not good. Deep conditioning your hair adds moisture beyond just like a leave-in. I would really recommend deep conditioning your hair if it's really weak or maybe doing a protein treatment. I know I have protein treatments, and I also just have my regular deep conditioners. Um, it really just depends what you're trying to target. If you can't really see a lot of definition in your hair, you know, you're not really seeing that spring in your curls, you might want to do a protein treatment. But if your hair is fine, like if it's like mine and like you really don't think that you need it, you don't need that extra boost, then you can just use like a regular cream 
deep conditioner. Oh, an Indian clay mask. Now, I've done that before and I didn't see the results immediately, but like the next day I looked at my hair and it was so shiny and my curls looked so good. Do Indian clay masks on your curls. They look amazing and use vinegar. Use apple cider vinegar. Y'all, yeah, you're welcome. Just, you'll thank me later. It stinks while you're doing it and it smells nasty and it might clunk up, clump up your drain. But after you take care of those things and you look at your hair and you're like, I look good. Comb your hair out while it's wet. Um, use a Denman brush or a wide tooth comb. Don't use a small tooth comb, obviously. These are things we already know. Um, but yeah, a wide tooth comb or a Denman brush or some type of curly hair brush. I used to use a paddle brush. For my hair texture, that's just what I like the best. I like using things like powder brush and denim brushes. Make sure that when you comb your hair out, you're using a detangler, some type of conditioner or something so that you're not snagging your hair and causing thinning or unneeded breakage. So this is probably going to be controversial, but I honestly think that too many protective styles can cause thinning, especially at your hairline. If you're doing like too many sew-ins or you're doing too many braided styles it can definitely cause um, alopecia in some people and honestly it could just thin your hair out for me I know that if I do too many braided styles I do experience a little bit of thinning um, one time someone braided my hair so tight that I literally it separated itself from my scalp and I could put my finger through I think she just braided my hair too tight but you also just don't want to let any old body braid your hair go to somebody that you trust and somebody that you know is not going to braid your hair so tight that you feel like you're scalp is going to break off like go to people that know how to braid and they know that they don't want to cause you tension alopecia like that's not cute so we don't want to be balding at our sides because somebody braided our hair too tight that's why for me i only do like i'll do two months of a protective style and then i'll give my hair a break if you go to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing can be bad so just make sure that you know who's doing your hair and you've seen their work and you've seen their clientele now this one in particular some of y'all might feel some type of way about this and i promise you i'm not coming at you sis i'm not coming at you but i'm gonna need you to do the big chop i just felt so much tension just now when i said that like let's take a breather together but let me just tell you why you need to do the big chop sis them curls are begging you to just cut off them four inches they're begging okay so when your hair when you have that like really nice curl and then it goes and you walk around like this but that's not cute that's not cute sis and i've been seeing so many girls and their curls are popping like their curls are popping and then i look down and it's just straight and I'm like, like what convinced you not to just cut it off? Now, I know some people transition and they cut off little by little by little, but these aren't the girls I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about the girls who willingly and knowingly walk around with the curls, just heat damage, just complete heat damage. That is not cute. Like it just makes you look like you just don't want to let go of the inches and i understand that because i used to be the same way i used to not want to let go of my inches because i had long hair i was tired of looking in the mirror or comparing my curls to other girls and being like oh this looks ugly like i can't wear my hair out because this looks trifling like i don't like it just get the big chop like i know it's scary i've done it like twice before if anybody knows me i'm like you never did the big chop i used to have hair like past my boobs like my hair used to be so long i got off like seven inches of my hair just cut it off sis okay i know i'm coming for you but just do it thank me later stop straightening your hair so much like i understand the fascination with straight hair and it's a little bit annoying especially with men the idea of straight hair for them is just like you look so good Oh my gosh it's so long like our culture is so mesmerized by length it's disgusting like when they look at you and 
they see your hair curly it's like did you cut your hair like, did you cut your hair off oh my gosh you cut your hair it looks so short when did you cut it it's like sis it's called shrinkage 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 you know it shrinks okay like we have length this sis like we have the length okay we have we have length sis it's long okay but it's just shrinkage that's what happens when you have curly hair and you wet it okay okay like i don't get the fascination with length and healthy hair is beautiful hair not long hair okay healthy long hair is beautiful hair but damaged long hair is not cute so if your hair is healthy and it's short who cares like who cares as long as it's healthy that's what should matter i always used to be like oh i'm going to a party i have to straighten my hair for this event no you don't and that is that Eurocentrism that we've been conditioned to think. That means that when I go anywhere nice, I need to straighten my hair. So I have to look put together. That's that conformity. I'm keeping my hair curly. I want a straight hair strike. I'm not straightening my hair. I'm keeping it curly because I want to be as in tune with my stuff as I can so that when I have kids, I can look at them in their face and be like, your curls are beautiful. My curls are beautiful. We're black and we're beautiful, period. Not, oh, it's picture day. Oh, let's straighten your hair. No, my baby's hair will be curly and beautiful with cute little clips in it on picture day, period. And I know I'm privileged in that I have a more acceptable texture, but for 4C, I have a way more Afro-like texture. Y'all are the ones that are targeted the most to conform because of y'all's hair texture. And I know I got off on a rant, but that's something that really kills me how we've been so brainwashed into thinking that straight hair is better or a looser texture is better. Well, it's not. Some of us just haven't been taught how to take care of our hair. A lot of us just are too lazy to take care of our hair. And a lot of us have just been conditioned. That's what my mom did. That's what her mom did. We all got relaxed we all permed our hair. And so that's just what you do naturally. But we have to really be better, especially for our kids. If we don't know how to deal with our hair, how are we going to help them? How are we going to help their hair grow and help them love their hair if they look at us and we don't love ours? So just think about that. And I know that everybody that straightens their hair doesn't have heat damage. Just make sure that if you are going to straighten your hair a lot, you're using thermal protectors because if you're not, you're just begging for heat damage. Another point is pulling back your hair too much. If my hair was not straight, I put it back in a bun, I would put it back in a ponytail, and I never wore my hair out. Now, one of the reasons for this is because I didn't have a lot of curly hair products that I thought would work in my hair and make it look how I wanted it to look. So something that I encourage you all to do is to go out there and look for products, research products that will make your hair look how you want it to look or how you envision it to look it does take a little bit of trial and error but once you find products good products that you really like you will be so grateful that you took those extra steps to make your hair how you want it second to last thing that i have on my list is oiling your scalp this goes along with deep conditioning I also don't oil my scalp enough. I have some hair affinity oil that I do use. You can use other things. You can use olive oil. You can use castor oil. Um, you can use almond oil. There's like a whole crap ton of oils that you can use. If my scalp is irritated, I will use tea tree oil as well. I have some 100% natural tea tree oil. Now the last thing on my list is washing your hair way too much. Don't wash your hair every day. You're washing out all of those things that your hair needs to grow. And so if you're always washing it out, it can't catch up. Your hair might start overproducing oils and now your hair is way too oily. So now you have to wash it all the time. You see what I mean? So. I only wash my hair when I need to and then when I do need to wash it, I do use like a clarifying shampoo. If you want to know what type of collagen and biotin shampoo that I'm using right now, give this video a thumbs up and I will let y'all know exactly what type that I have and where I got it from. It is so good. I'm Issa. Thank you for watching and thank you for becoming a part of the Forever Family. Bye.